three startups trying to make it in the toughest business district in the world, Wall Street. They're not your everyday tech startups. They're in design, finance, and event management, risking everything for their shot at the title. My story begins by having an American father, a Costa Rican mother, I studied international finance. I worked at a hedge fund that came to an unfortunately premature conclusion with the crisis in 2008. And here in uh, summer of 2014, co-founded Go Cashless. So Go Cashless, we're building an app called Thanks, focused on giving and getting tips. And the idea, quite simply, is that we're carrying less cash nowadays. If you had cash on you, the ATM probably gave you $20 bills or higher. Are you going to ask for $18 back? It's awkward. It takes the shine off of being generous. So we can solve that with an app that's optimized for gratuities. So you pull out your mobile phone, you select the amount you want to give, and then you enter the thanks ID of the person associated with that account that you're giving to, which is going to be short and really easy to remember, like A123. We are interior designers based in New York City. We were both educated in design history, so we bring that into our work and our design practice. Um, aside from that, uh, we're really good friends. <laughs> um, both dedicated yoga practitioners. That's true. I think there's this idea out there that if you're a startup, if you're a small business, then you must be a tech business. And what we're doing is really quite traditional. Um, we have kind of based our business in what a traditional interior design firm would be. Um, and that business hasn't changed that much in the last you know, 50 years. We are in the business of operations and logistics, consulting and execution, largely for event production and experiential marketing, otherwise known as I Got a Guy. So now you got 40 and 41 are cut, are moved down into the area where 42 was, and 31 comes across the floor and sits where 40 and 41 are now, but snugged up next to 37. I'm not afraid to uh, let my opinion be known. That was a good answer. Experiential marketing can mean a variety of things. You set up a free concert that was brought to you by this sponsor. You set up a pop-up shop that's a temporary store selling one product or one product line. We're working with companies that shut down Park Avenue from the Brooklyn Bridge to 72nd Street. Those things require a lot of manpower. And you know, we, when you're working within the confines of New York City and you need to you know, shut down Park Avenue from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. in the afternoon on a Saturday, you're gonna need a lot of manpower to get that done. This is the kitchen showroom, one of the kitchen showrooms that Mimi's considering. Yeah. So contemporary cabinets, traditional cabinets, transitional cabinets. I grew up around furniture. My grandfather was an upholsterer. My other grandfather had a, a metal foundry and made patio furniture. So it really was something that I just had an impulse for. When I graduated from NYU, I happened to be hired as the assistant to a creative director at an interior decoration magazine. And that was the moment where I was, you know, a light bulb went off. And I was like, this, there's something about this that I really love. The great thing about being an interior designer is that you don't have to put up a great financial stake to start your business. We had like a small loan from our families. Really all we needed to do was invest in a website and start to generate images. And we were able to have a face to a business. Our business model is quite simple. It'll be completely free to give and receive on the platform. The way we will make money is actually by the sum of all the deposits that are in the account. So if every user on the system has $20 associated with it, hopefully, God willing, this works, we will be able to make interest on the sum of all those deposits. We need a bank partner. Our lawyers have told us that our business model could be interpreted as that of a money transmitter. Our launch has been delayed by the fact that we do not yet have this bank partner. 
Finding the right point of contact within a bank is very difficult. Finding a decision maker, having them consider what our needs are, it's a little bit like finding a needle in a haystack. It's a key challenge to resolve. Once I unlock that challenge, then I can hire, we can focus on all the other components to building the community. We have the most resources in New York. I got, I got the most guys in New York, you know. Um, I have the most, I've collected the most dots to connect. Our roles in the company are very overlapping as with all entrepreneurs often wear many hats. My role is to make sure that we are functioning as a company in the most efficient way possible. My task list is endless every day, but I'm the one that wrote that task list. It's ballsy, daring. Um, there's something about it that's more thrilling to me than working for somebody else. If you can make yourself comfortable with being uncomfortable, you will excel in your everyday interactions. You have to just get up and go. I couldn't turn this over to you and have you understand it. I have I to interpret that, it for you. I was like, I want to put eyes on it, but at the same time, I don't understand what that means. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> landed our two biggest projects yet last year, one of which is not located in New York City, um, so we'll be traveling for it. It's in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. The other project is in Brooklyn Heights, which is a complete gut renovation of a brownstone. I was expecting this to feel much smaller. I mean, I know we'll have like cabinetry built out here with the wet bar. What are we doing on this wall? It's the mural underneath it. So they originally had this mural and then they applied wallpaper on top of it. As much advertising as you really do, the only, not the only, but the main reason why you get hired is because someone heard from a friend of theirs or relatives that you are a pleasure to work with. You have to be easy to get along with. The biggest challenge for us this year is making sure these large projects that we've landed actually turn out really well. Getting these photographed and getting these on our website are going to take our portfolio to the next level. So we need to be extraordinarily careful about every choice we make because ultimately, even though it's someone else's home, it's also kind of the future of our business. Challenges, challenges, not problems. And we actually like to identify these things and call them situations because a situation is easily handled. A problem, people are scared of problems. Can you just check out that email list? This? No, 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 Jack. Here? Yeah. My son is due this year, and it's going to be a challenge managing that guy and uh, the other guys that I got at the same time. As they say, if you make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. I think it's the best place in the world to test the Thanks app. There are more parking garages, more hotels, more bellhops and taxis, and I think New York offers us tremendous credibility and competitive advantages, assuming we survive. On the next episode of Wall Street Startups, Groundworks get a special delivery with a big lesson on responsibility. The designers get a proposal that will change one of their lives forever. And it's make or break for Eric. If a bank doesn't step in, it'll be thanks, but no thanks to his big dreams.